Hello, my name is Ludwig Eichinger. I'm an application engineer at Keysight Technology for simulation software. In this video, I will illustrate the workflow how to simulate electrostatic discharge circuits in Pathwave Advanced Design System ADS from Keysight to protect the electronic on a PCB against damage. At each input and output interface, or say at each connector, the electronic should be protected with an electrostatic discharge circuit. In the first part of this video, I will show different methods how to model an ESD source or pulse. On the left side of this slide, there are three different methods how to model an ESD source. One method is to use a piecewise linear time source. Here in this source, I have just like a table. So it, we have start with the time and then the, we have the first time point and then the first voltage point, the second time point, second voltage point, and so on. The second method is to use the data access component where I just assign a, a file with a table. Another method is also to use um, data set source. Here I just assign the data set, file name and the expression. So this data can come, for example, from a scope. It is also very important to have accurate models for other components, such as for capacitors, ESD diodes, for the chip input impedance, and probably for the connector impedance and active devices and all other passive devices. Many vendors provide an ADS design kit or model library for their components. It is also possible to import SPICE models in different formats, such as PSPICE, SPICE 2G, SPICE 3, LT SPICE, SPECTRE, or HSPICE. In the second part, I will explain how to add the layout effects, run an electromagnetic co-simulation to get a deep insight to the design. Here we see the surface currents derived from the electromagnetic fields, which is excited by the ESD pulse. The dynamic current and voltages are displayed in a rectangular plot. It is really difficult to be allowed to present a real life PCB example because most are confidential. This is the advanced design system. Left is the main window and right RF Pro. This design data is from Seco. Seco is a company in Italy. They allow us to use and show their PCB in a demo. This PCB is a COM Express module and can be mounted on any motherboard to have a quick access to high computing power. To build an example, I search for a connector and found on the lower right side an SMA connector. So here at the connector, I will apply the ESD pulse. Here's a capacitor, here's the ESD diode, and here's a chip. The goal is to protect this chip and all other electronic from a high electronic discharge pulse. Before I go deeper into the layout, I will show how to model the ESD source. I open here the schematic. I have already prepared something. At the beginning of this video, I already talked about the piecewise linear source. This is available in the 
palette in the time domain sources and just uh, drag and drop it down to the schematic and uh, just define the time and the voltage in this line. The second method is to use a data access component to generate the ESD piles. First, I wrote a, an MDF file. So the MDF file looks like this one. So I have here two columns, the time and the voltage. You just need to follow a few rules to, to be compliant with the syntax. So here in the second tab, we have here the independent variables. So we use here for the name, time, and also for the value. Then it ended up here. And it's also very important to use the type generalized multidimensional data. Now I will show how to assign this data to a component. So in this case, I just use here this voltage DC component. Place it here on the schematic, double click on it to get the dialog window. Here I switch over from standard to file based. So here I can just choose the component, the data access component. So and here I need to put the dependent parameter name, which is here this voltage. So I just put it here, click OK, and then this source reads the data out from the data access component. The data in the DAC component provides the shape of the ESD piles. To be able to have different voltage level, I created here a voltage level controller. In this subcircuit, there is a simple op amp component. You just type here op amp and then you find here the components, place it and define the parameters. Don't forget to assign these parameters to the subcell that you have later access to gain and delay in this case. To find the required voltage level, you just run the tuner and move the slider that you get here, for example, 8 kilovolt at the input of the ESD circuit. In the next step, I will show how to add the layout model. So in the main window, I go to File, Import, Design. Here I choose ODB directory format. I navigate to the data, then I click OK, but make sure that you make a new library. During the import, you can also change the substrate, but it is not necessary yet. You can do it afterwards all, always in the substrate editor and then click OK. So here in the ADS main window, we have three different views, the file view, folder view, and library view. In the file view, we can navigate to the complete database and open an another workspace. So in the library view, I see which libraries are attached to this workspace. The library ESD underscore lib is the workspace library which was generated when I generated the workspace. The CSA 77 library comes from the ODB++ import. So this library uses the same technology what we have originally in the CAD system. The same layers, same units, and so on. And here we can find all cells which are included in this library. To have a better overview, I also can use the folder view because the uh, ODB++ importer make here a nice structure. So it generates a components folder. So here in the components folder, I only have 
the cells for the package component. So the component cells only have a layout view. If we want to add a simulation model, then we also add a schematic view and put there the SPICE model. Later, I will talk more about that. So ODB++ importer created here this folder with all subcells for the components, the top layout and the substrate. The other cells I added afterwards. Now I will open the top layout. So here in this layout, I have a full editor available. I can change some uh, line widths and so on. I can go from layer to layer. For example, if I switch to layer one, layer two, three, or I can expect with the navigators different nets. But this is actually not what I need to do now because I only need an ear model. And therefore, I just send this complete design to the RF Pro environment. And therefore, I click here on this RF Pro icon. RF Pro generated a 3D structure for EM simulation. Here with this icons, I can switch to the different view. So I can look from top, from button, or I can also look here, for example, from front and so on. But it's also possible just use here the rotating function. You can also use hotkeys like seven to look from, look from top. On the left upper area is the design tree. So we have here the nets, the components, and substrate. And also, if you have pins on the layout, it will be also displayed here. So the nets have different roles. Black is ground, red is power, and yellow is a signal. And in the middle is the analysis setup. So we can make here a right mouse click and choose full EM extraction. So that means all structure will be simulated. In this case, I only want to simulate a few lines and therefore I use a new uh, user-defined EM extraction and generate a new analysis. So at the beginning of my video, I already talked about here this error, what we want to simulate. So we have here the connected J2, the capacitor, the diode, and the um, pin at the chip. So um, in the EM setup, I also need to assign simulation models. So LAMP components, such as capacitor, if I have a Murata, Samsung, or TDK, or S-parameter, I can directly assign it here in this environment. But when I have a SPICE model, like for this D2024, I need assign this model into the cell. And therefore, I go first to the layout. So we have here the D2024. To assign the simulation model, it is easier to start from the layout window. So this is the layout window. I go to the navigator, I search for the component D2024. And now I can click to this component. So it's here, you see it's selected. And, um, and now I can push into the component. So this is the footprint of this diode. Actually in the, in the main window, here you see in this component, we only have a layout view, but now I will also generate a schematic view. And therefore I just go to schematic in the layout window, generate update schematic. And now you see a schematic view is was generated. I click okay. So what I did now, I synchronized the pins from layout to schematics that I have the same name and the same pin number. So next step is 
to add a component of the ESD diode. Therefore, uh, I need also to attach the design kit to this workspace. So I found on the internet, it was very quick, a design kit from Invinion for the TVS diodes. So you, you usually get a zip file. So you just click here, add zip design kit, and then it automatically adds here to the favorite. You can also manage just over the library, but I prefer to do it over favorites. If I need it again, then I just um, activate or deactivate it in a quick way. So now the um, diodes are installed. So I just go here into the palette, Infineon TVS diode, and then so I just choose any one diode from this library and place it on the schematic. I don't use the same what Seiko is using. Actually, I don't know what which diodes they have mounted on their PCB. This is just an example which should demonstrate the workflow. So before I connect the pins to the diode, I need to go to the layer to get a, the knowledge how the pins must be connected. So now I bring the ADS layout to front. So we see here we have the pin one, two, and three. But it's better to go to the top hierarchy to get um, more insight how these pins are connected. So here I have also these little icons where I can view the numbers, the, the pin numbers or port numbers. So you see here, for example, this is pin one, two, and three. That means the pin three is on the line. So this is my um, pl plus and this I, uh, one and two is minus. Then I go back to the schematic. I place the plus here on top. Minus is uh, the one and two. So next step, I save it and generate a schematic symbol. Then I just go to window here in this menu, symbol, create symbol. OK, and then save it. Next step. I uh, go back to the RF Pro environment. I close this first because I want to reload it to get the newest information from the SPICE model. Now I can restart RF Pro again. Either I double click here on this RF Pro icon or click here in the layout to RF Pro. So now I'm back in RF Pro. So I go straight to the component, what I want to add to my uh, analysis. Um, here, or first I make here an analysis, new user-defined analysis. So it's analysis two, for example. Then I click here on this component. Then I just drag and drop this component into the model library. And you see it also automatically chooses the nets which are connected to this capacitor. And then I also want to have the D2024 in the component list. So here we see for the diode, there's no warning because it automatically picked up the simulation model and assigned it automatically. So we can also look to it. So we see this is the model from the cell view and also the symbol. So this is correct. And here for the capacitor, there's no model defined. And therefore, we need to add now also a model for this capacitor. I just double click, click on add, and choose model database. So here we can choose now from three different vendors, so either Murata, TDK, or Samsung. You can also do a use here the filters in each um, section. So I search now for a 100 nanofarad capacitor. Type here 100 nanofarad. And now it offers me here different uh, models. You can just uh, 
click on one and then you see also the impedance trace and also the data of this capacitor. So when I choose one of them, click OK, click Yes, and done. And the yellow warning has now disappeared. There are several ways how to generate ports. So here I can just click to the nets. You can also click on hide that you see what you have selected. Here in this case, you just make here a right mouse click, create ports or model groups. Then on the J1, I want to have a port, but here I don't want, I have already a component, so I just click do nothing. And the ground reference here, you can just uh, uh, choose ground RF and then I click on OK. And now when I click here on this port, then you see we have here also a plus minus pin, so a, a, a port. Then the same I do now for the second trace, right mouse click and create ports. So here we have more than one. So this is a, it's a U277. I need a port and for all other, I don't want anything connected because I have already connected my diode. Click OK. Now we have the two ports, the input port, output port, and also the nets. As next, I need to define the frequency plan in options. Therefore, I double click here on options, choose the frequency tab. We have here different possibilities. Adaptive frequency sampling, logarithmic, linear, and single. But before I define the max frequency, I need to think about it. What is the needed frequency bandwidth to get a valid transient simulation? On this PCB, I will apply an IAC 61000 minus 4 minus 2 ESD pulse waveform. T rise should be between 0.7 nanosecond till 1 nanosecond for 10-90% for this ESD pulse waveform. I already placed two markers to measure the T rise for the created signal, and it is 826 picoseconds. Left is the voltage at 8 kilovolt and write the current with 30 ampere. The required simulation bandwidth will be calculated with this equation. It is um, 0.349 over the rise time. So the minimum bandwidth is 420 megahertz. I will run now two simulations. One up to 500 megahertz and the second simulation up to 2 gigahertz. In RF Pro, the frequency plan will be defined in options. Double click here on options, go to the frequency tab and here I just use an adaptive frequency sweep from 0 hertz to 2 gigahertz. The second sweep plan is an adaptive frequency sweep from 0 to 500 megahertz, and I add two single frequency points at 1 megahertz and then 10 megahertz because I want to look at the near field at this frequency. I also switch on the near field for all frequencies. Double click on run and the simulation will start. When the simulation has finished, it is possible to visualize the mesh, the S parameter, TDR, TDT, the near field and the far field. For the co-simulation, I will double click here to generate a sub-circuit. In this sub-circuit, RF Pro generated an EM co-simulation setup. It automatically connects the layout structure with the capacitor and with the diode. 
The subcircuit from the EM simulation can now be inserted into the ESD template and run the simulation. Here we see the data display. This is the ESD voltage at the input and the ESD voltage at the output. And here's the current at the input and current at the output. I did run two EM co-simulation, one with the 500 megahertz and one with the 2 gigahertz model. Both are identical. In the next step, I will show how to display the near field in RF Pro. Double click on near field. The next step is to choose the excitation type. So I did run a co-simulation before and therefore I choose here the data set from the co-simulation. Click on these dots and then go to the data directory and load the data. And when this is green, then the data is valid. So now I can choose the frequency, for example, at one megahertz. Um, it's probably better if you scale here in properties, when you go to properties, uh, switch off the automatic range and choose a different scaling. Let's take probably six. Now we see here that at the chip, the surface currents are very small so that you can see the currents on the line even better it is possible to switch on or off the different layers so here I switch off all layers and switch on only layer one and now we can see exactly at the input of the chip the surface currents it is also possible to run an animation in the tab sequence to animate the phase from 0 to 360 degree with 5 degree steps. Now I am at the end and will conclude with a short summary. I illustrated the workflow how to simulate an ESD circuit in Passwave ADS. I presented different methods how to build an ESD pulse and a simulation template, which was used for a transient EM co-simulation. This simulation showed a low current density at the input of the chip. The goal was achieved. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.